So I am grateful to rise today to speak to all my colleagues in this house about Bill 287, the Equity Education for Young Ontarians Act. To begin, I would like to explain today why, what this bill means to me and why I, a white woman who holds privilege and cannot experience racism, is presenting a bill to fight racism. Mr. Speaker, the fact is that I was raised by a father who was racist. He would regularly make racist remarks, and I vividly remember how uneasy it always made me feel. What's worse is that there was no challenging my father on his beliefs either. The reality is that the impacts of colonialism and racism were certainly not topics we discussed at home, at school, or with friends. Instead, I learned about the history of slavery and the horrifying treatment of racialized communities through movies. Had it not been for outside forces opening my eyes, I may have grown up sheltered within a very prejudiced environment. I left home at 16 to live my life by my own values, and one of those values is to always fight injustice. That is part of why I became a lawyer and also why I'm here today. Over the last few years, I have watched the rise in racist incidents feeling as powerless and as outraged as I was when I was a teenager. Now having teenagers of my own, I see and I hear that they are feeling the same level of distress I do. We also know that the fear that we feel witnessing these incidents is nowhere near the level of fear and danger that racialized and indigenous communities experience. I recognize that it is a privilege in itself that I can stand here today and ask for the support. So many black, indigenous, and people of color in our province have been fighting and calling for actions for generations. Now that I am elected, it is my responsibility as an ally to these communities to do something about it. Before getting into this bill itself, I would like to speak for a moment about how this proposal came to be. So last summer, a university student named Parni Karaj reached out to me to discuss a, a petition she had created. Her petition was posted on the change.org website, it still is, and it demanded the implementation of a mandatory course on race and ethnicity in Ontario high schools. This petition has collected over 66,500 signatures and the number continues to grow. I am grateful to all that have shared their stories with me about their experiences with our police forces and with our governmental system. Leading up to introducing this bill, I consulted with many experts and heard from all kinds of perspectives. One of those opportunities was when I held a forum on reform of the police and justice system. Hosted by City Councilor Rawson King, a leader in the Ottawa Black community, over 200 participants came together to hear from six speakers and discuss a way forward. It was a deeply valuable conversation between experts, members of the Ottawa Police Services Board, local church leaders, community members, and passionate spokespeople from the BIPOC community who spoke eloquently about what racism feels like to those who experience it. A common thread woven through all of the consultation and meetings was that it is important that we openly talk about racism, even though those conversations may be, be difficult, just like the ones on human trafficking. We need to really listen to the calls for change and conversation need to be framed appropriately, informed from reliable source and respectful. This bill proposes two amendments to the Education Act. So the first change is to include in the Ontario school curriculum, the teaching of the history of colonization and its impact on the rights of indigenous and racialized people. The ongoing racial and social inequities in Ontario, including in particular disparities in Ontarians' experience with Ontario's healthcare, justice, and education systems. And finally, how students can contribute to building an inclusive and equitable Ontario. These topics would be addressed from junior kindergarten through grade 12 in an age-appropriate manner. The content for these topics would need to be developed in collaboration with local non-governmental persons and organizations who have specialized knowledge in these topics. 
as well as groups representing Ontarians who are Black, Indigenous, or persons of color. A crucial part of this process will be that teachers and other staff of the board receive adequate training and support to appropriately bring these subjects in the classroom. This is an approach to ensure that Indigenous and racialized members of our communities feel seen and heard. The second change proposed in this bill is with respect to the Education Equity Secretariat within the Ministry of Education. Bill 287 proposes that school boards report annually on various findings regarding systemic barriers that affect Indigenous and racialized pupils and staff. The Education Equity Secretariat Initiatives Branch would play an active role in using that information to do better. Using the findings, the director of the Education Equity Secretariat Initiative Branch could then make recommendations to the minister to inform police development, policy development to address issues identified in these reports. As of right now, there are requirements in place to prioritize equity within the education system, but the implementation of these requirements within the 72 school boards in Ontario varies in terms of strategy and in terms of commitment. Having school boards reporting and exchanging on best practices would yield better outcomes. Every child has the right to an education free of systemic barriers and discrimination. By ensuring that we have comprehensive reporting, publicly available recommendations for improvement, and concrete action on eliminating barriers from the education system, we can create a transparent and effective path towards eliminating systemic inequities. I am a strong believer that society can be improved by working at its roots. And the roots of our society begin in our schools because that is where our young minds are developed. We all experience good and bad influences through our upbringing, our parents, and our families, whether we realize it or not. But we are also deeply, deeply influenced by our schools, our peers, and our educators. While it may be more difficult to change how parents raise their children, we do have an opportunity to have a positive influence in schools. Our youth want these conversations. They want these discussions. They have communicated their anger and their demands for change, especially through social media. But social media can also be a space of confusion, misinformation, and hostility. Our children deserve a secure space to discuss this issue, these issues with educators that are equipped to provide them with factual and trauma-informed information. The classroom can provide this forum. Equity education can have an impact even further beyond the classroom as well. We know that racialized communities are disproportionately affected by poverty, human trafficking, unsafe housing, dangerous working conditions, and by so many other difficult and dangerous circumstances. By working to eliminate prejudice in the education system, we can eliminate the barriers in our society that can lead to their, these circumstances that no one should have to face. When youth grow up with prejudice, they go on to bring those bias into the workplace in all areas of our society. They also go on to raise their own children with the same bias. Equity education has the potential to have a ripple effect on all the other areas in which racialized and indigenous people experience systemic racism. It's time to address racism and prejudice where it starts, and the best space we have to do that is within our schools. Last week, the government announced that they would be putting resources into fighting an anti-Asian racism through the education system, and I was very encouraged by that decision. That tells me that the members opposite understand the importance of tackling racism through our schools and that there is a willingness to act. I recognize that there is so much more to be done in all, sect in all sectors to truly fight racism and discrimination in this process. But the work does not stop here by any means. This is but one crucial step in the way forward that we can take together immediately. I urge every member in this house to show Ontarians that they have listened to racialized and indigenous communities in this province and around the world. I urge them to stand with the members of our communities that have been fighting for the equity that they have always deserved and that shouldn't have to go through that fight on their own. Support for this bill 
is support for concrete action towards a better future for our province. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.